first, the legal element of this, this application, um, it sounds like a, a big deal coming from the attorney general. Is this unprecedented? How rare is it to uh, request that this be made public? This is a remarkable and unusual move, Victor. We essentially just saw Merrick Garland call Donald Trump's bluff. And here's what I mean by that. In the wake of this search warrant, Donald Trump has two documents, he and his lawyers. One is the search warrant itself with whatever attachments, and the other is this inventory or this receipt. Now, those documents are going to have important information about the search. These are the documents that people have been saying, well, if Donald Trump wants to make an issue of this, he should release them. What Merrick Garland just said is, we, the DOJ, are going to release them. We're going to go to the judge. We're going to ask the judge to unseal those documents, meaning make them available to the public, because DOJ policy is they will only speak about things that are on the record with the court. So essentially, Merrick Garland just said, OK, Donald Trump, you're not going to release them. Well, we're going to do it. We're going to put those documents in front of the American public. But I do think it's important to understand what will and will not be in those documents. The warrant typically will list logistical information, place to be searched, uh, usually a general description of items to be searched for, the name of the judge, a deadline by which DOJ has to execute the search. But it also sometimes has what we call an attachment. And that attachment typically will list the statutes, the laws that DOJ believes it has probable cause to believe were violated. So that's going to be the first thing I look for. I'm going to look right at that attachment and say, do they list the statutes? That's going to tell us what laws could be at play here. When we talk about the second document, the inventory or the receipt, that is what it sounds like. It's a listing. The FBI says, here are the items that we removed from Mar-a-Lago. Now, again, degrees of specificity and generality tend to vary. I do not expect that to have a piece of paper by piece of paper breakdown if they took thousands of pages. I think what we're going to see is listings like X number of boxes, if they took any electronic documents, if they took any laptops, cell phones, that kind of thing. Now, one last thing, Victor. The yeah. document that we still will not see is the big one. The most detailed document here is the affidavit. That is the document which typically can be 20, 40, 100 pages where prosecutors lay out chapter and verse. Here's all of our proof that gives us probable cause. That still is going to remain confidential. Donald Trump does not have that. Merrick Garland is not moving to unseal that. But the other two documents that Donald Trump has, Merrick Garland has said, well, I'm going to show them to you now. Because that, that affidavit is crucial and central to the investigation, you wouldn't expect that that would be released at this point. No, typically, Victor, that only gets released if and when there's a charge. If somebody gets searched and then indicted, then they will be given a copy of that affidavit. Again, this is the very long, detailed document so that that person can then challenge it in court. Typically, what we'd see is the defendant or the person who's been searched will, will ask the judge to throw out whatever was found because they'll argue that the affidavit was insufficient, did not establish probable cause. So that's the longest, most specific, most detailed document. We are still not going to see that, but we are going to see if Garland's motion is granted, which I suspect it will be by the judge, then we will see the warrant itself, which will give us some crucial information, and we will see the return, the inventory of the items that were seized from Mar-a-Lago.